Lotion in the basket. That'll be the hip tang. There's kind of difference, and that's a hip tang. Today, it's I Vitaloni, or the end of it, so spoilers and all that. I Vitaloni, Vitaloni being Italian, or at least the director's slang for late 20s ish middle class loafers, is a film with a synopsis that cannot do it justice. On the surface, it's a soap opera about five men who are just a bit beyond being just a bit too old to be doing nothing with their lives. It features a hypnagogic score composed by Nino Rota, who would later go on to score the first two Godfather films. That, the use of the sound of the wind, and Federico Fellini's direction create an idiosyncratic tone. The film chiefly focuses on the selfish but not inhuman Fausto, starting with his finding out that he's impregnated Miss Mermaid 1953, oh dear, and ending with him apparently accepting family life, but only after his long-suffering wife has been brought to the brink of despair. Fellini's third film, I Vitaloni is about both growing up and really also observing the way people are. Niente, pensavo. A che cosa? A Sandra. Ma che c'entra Sandra adesso? Che mi vuoi fare la morale? The characters are really all losers, even if they're not unlikable, and the narrative essentially follows their existences. They're all stuck in a coastal town, stagnant, but comfortable enough not to do anything about it. As with many of his works, there's a biographical element here, but I think what really stands out is the sympathy Fellini has for the characters and the nuance they're drawn with. Here today, though, I wanted to talk about the very end. At the end, Moraldo, perhaps the calmest of the friends, certainly I think the one with the clearest of brains, leaves the town, but as he does so, he encounters Guido, a boy he's had few interactions with before. It ends like this. Ciao, Moraldo! Ciao! Addio! So why do I point to this? Well, I think that while the meaning of the train leaving cut with the other Vitaloni sleeping is obvious, I think, and this is just my interpretation, the real moment of focus is Moraldo looking back at Guido. Guido, who seemingly is too young to really understand why Moraldo would want to leave, is really only one step behind Moraldo. Moraldo has only just determined that leaving is the thing to do, and I think Guido isn't so much Moraldo as a boy, but Moraldo as yesterday. What's poignant for me isn't the idea of leaving your literal childhood behind, but the fact that Moraldo has apparently come to this decision, the crossing of the Rubicon, so suddenly, even instantly. He hasn't been dreaming about leaving for years now, it's just sort of a sudden realization. I've got to get out. 
That's just my interpretation. But regardless, the ending is powerful because of the slight ambiguity of Moraldo looking back, because of the contrast of determined sadness and naive happiness, and because it all feels quite personal to the filmmaker. It's Mountbatten's favourite Fellini, I'm assuming. Tomorrow, you are a true believer.